Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and perhaps last week or the week before you saw me messing around with Mantaflow and showing you how you can get some nice high resolution smoke for a close up. This week I'm just going to show you real quick how I've done some of the background elements for my shots because I didn't really want to do smoke simulation because I already had a simulation in the scene and I just needed some stuff for the background. So this week, I'm just gonna show you real quick how you can do kind of a hack job to get a fairly nice smoke simulation without rendering out a giant bake and all that crazy stuff. So let's just look at it up close here real quick. What you can see is basically a particle system that is shooting out a bunch of particles that look kind of like smoke puffs. And it's not perfect close up, but like I mentioned, this is a background element and it's gonna work for me because these things aren't very close to the camera. As you can see in the render before I had this, which were just kind of planes with smoke animations on the back. And now I'm just gonna update this first shot real quick and switch it to this, which I think looks so much better. And you can actually tell what the focus of this scene is. So I'm just gonna run you through real quick how this particle system works and all the settings I have going on. I put up a poll the other week about if you prefer like step-by-step -step tutorials or scene breakdowns, and it looks like most people prefer step-by-step -step tutorials, but I'm going to ignore that now and just give you a little quick scene breakdown of this element here. So if I'm in the unrendered view here, you can kind of see what's going on. It's just a whole bunch of planes coming out of the back of this canister. We've got our nice little fire cone thingy here on the front that we put on last week, and there's this wind force that is parented to the canister. If we grab this, it all just goes around with it. And if I select the particle system and just hide that for a second, you can see I've got a little flat plane here on the back parented as well. And this is our particle emitter. So I'm just gonna run you through the settings real quick here. Our start and end frames are fairly important. I've just set those to be like when it's about to come into the camera view. And I've just set the end frame to be the end of the animation. So there's that, it's all working out. One thing that I've noticed is not so realistic as like the end of the trail because particles just sort of disappear at the end rather than fading out. I looked at the particle info node in compositing and unfortunately in EV that's not working right now. So maybe that'll work in the future, but for now I've just kind of used workarounds like this doesn't actually come into frame by the end of the animation, so it looks fine. Then in my other shot, I just kind of had them in the background, so I used some depth of field to kind of blur it out and make it look all right. So some other settings up here, it's all grayed out just because I have it baked at the moment. But for lifetime, that basically the longer the lifetime, the longer the particles will stay in the scene and the longer the trail will be. And for lifetime randomness, that sort of just helps it to fade out a little bit because they won't all be disappearing at frame 20. So that's for the emission settings. Um, I've got some velocity enabled, about 60 meters per second it looks like, and I've got some rotation enabled so they're not oriented all exactly the same. That kind of gives it a nice random effect. Of course, there's random phase and phase and all that settings. You can just mess around with those. And then for render, I've got it set to render as object, and I messed around with the scale a bit here. And for my object, I've got this smoke plane, which you can find well, you can't find, I can find, somewhere underneath the ocean. And it doesn't look like very much at the moment. You can kind of see what it looks like here against the water, but it's basically just a poof of smoke, which I made in Mantaflow and then just rendered out an image with a transparent background and everything. Let's look real quick at the shading properties of this. It's a fairly simple thing. I was trying to make it more complicated and work better, but I didn't. If I just clean this up a little bit, you can see a little bit better what's going on here. We've got the smoke puff. And if we, let's zoom into it. You got the smoke puff. I've put that through a color ramp so that it gets a little bit more white and kind of crunches up the contrast a little bit. Then that mixes a transparent node with a translucent node. And then I've just got that going into another mix shader, which mixes it with a transparent again, just so I can have some control over how see-through or not see-through, it is. See, if we move this back and forth, we get some different results. And also, if we're up here, you can see when we look at this, the closer we have it to translucent, the crazier it looks, and then it sort of fades out as we get closer to transparent. So it's really good to have that control going on there. 
So yeah, believe it or not, that is actually pretty much all of this effect. If we go up here, I can just show you the cache real quick. It's fairly simple, you just hit bake, and sometimes when you don't have it baked it can behave a little bit crazily, but it will generally play back fairly well in real time. I just like to bake it to make sure it's the results I'm getting. But yeah, once you hit bake, it will save internally to your blend file. You don't have to set up any paths for that. That's really nice. I think that's all the settings I have. Oh wait, hold up. So for field weight, I've just turned gravity all the way down to zero because I don't want these particles like with gravity affecting them because it's smoke and that doesn't really get affected by gravity very much. But all these are enabled other than gravity. So I think that's pretty much all the particle settings I have enabled. And that is the result you get. Of course, it can take some fiddling around, and it doesn't look absolutely stunning. But like I've mentioned, this is a background element that you probably won't be seeing too close. And if you are going to see smoke very close up, I recommend you switch over to the smoke simulator. But this is a nice way to make your life just a little bit easier, and just get things done quite a bit faster, because smoke takes a long time to bake. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this quick scene breakdown. If you found this helpful and you'd like to keep up to date on tutorials I'm making, there's a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements. And what you do when you click that, that'll just sign you up for my email list. And I'll make sure the first thing I send you is some free hydraulic kit bash elements, which will give you kind of an advantage and jumpstart on mechanical projects that you're working on. I love making mechs myself, so that's really helped me out. But anyways, that'll give you that for free. And then in the future, I'll shoot you an email whenever I upload a tutorial. But that's pretty much it. I hope you have an awesome day, and cheers!